Grace can move mountains of guilt and shame. Grace can flood your days in the desert with streams of living water. Grace can bring you through the fire of adversity without the smell of smoke being upon you. Grace is the unmerited favor of God. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can only receive it because God is so glad to give it. Grace is an ocean without a shoreline. Grace has no limit. God's grace will give you a new beginning. God's grace is greater than your sin. God's grace is greater than all your faults and failures. And it's the only thing that can truly heal you. God's grace comes to even those that have not been faithful. God's grace is, comes to even those that have really not walked the way that they should walk. And yet His grace and His mercy is extended to every single person that will believe Him, that will come, that will humble themselves under His mighty hand. So often we think that God is only interested in the quote, good people. The people that have it all together, people that never make mistakes, never give in to temptation. If your performance is good enough, then you can expect God's goodness. The truth is, it's just the opposite. When you blow it, God doesn't turn away from you, He turns to you. His grace comes looking for you. Jesus told a parable about a shepherd that had a hundred sheep, but one of them went astray. The shepherd left the 99 and went looking for the one. What was that? Grace came looking. You can be high on drugs and grace is looking for you. You can be working in the wrong kind of place, grace is looking for you. You can be cheating people, dishonest, no integrity, and God will leave the 99 and come after you. You can be discouraged, depressed, about to give up on life. The good news is, right now, grace is looking for you. You may have made mistakes, you're not where you want to be in life. You could easily sit on the sidelines. Let the accusing voices convince you that you're all washed up. Nothing good is in your future. No, right now, grace is coming to you. God is saying, I'm not mad at you. I'm madly in love with you. I'm not holding anything against you. I'm not keeping a record of your mistakes. I'm not even interested in your past. I'm interested in your future. Friends, it doesn't matter to God where you've been. It matters to God where you're going. That's why He's coming after you. That's why He won't leave you alone. His grace will never give up. He loves you too much to let you miss your destiny. You can turn away again and again and again. But you know what? Grace will keep coming. Wherever you go, grace will keep looking. You can't outrun the grace of God. You can't do too much wrong to keep it away. You can't turn away too many times. God's grace will keep coming saying, I've got something better. I've got forgiveness. I've got mercy. I've got restoration. I've got a new beginning. And if you will shake off the guilt, the condemnation, start making choices that honor God, He'll bless you in spite of your mistakes. He'll make something great out of your life in spite of your past. God never gives up on you. Don't give up on yourself. Receive the grace. Believe that there's something amazing in your future. The scripture says, God came to seek and to save those that are lost. Seek means to go after, to pursue, to track down. Even when we run away, God runs to us. Even when we don't measure up, God says, that's okay. I forgive you anyway. Well, Joel, he doesn't deserve it. It was his fault. He brought the trouble on himself. That's what grace is all about. You can't earn it. You don't have to be good enough. It's a free gift. All you have to do is receive it. Listen, the price has already been paid 2,000 years ago. It's not our goodness. It's God's goodness. God has made us worthy. But we think, you know, God's never going to help me. I brought this trouble on myself. But think of it. As a father, imagine our son Jonathan, maybe five years old. I hear him screaming, Daddy, come help me. I look outside and he's hanging from a tree branch, kind of high in the air, holding on for dear life. If he falls, he's going to get hurt. I wouldn't say, hang on, Jonathan. Let me think about how good you've been lately. 
Victoria, has Jonathan been cleaning his room? Has he been treating his sister right? Dad, hurry, come help me. Just a second, Jonathan, I got to check your report card. That wouldn't even enter into my mind. That's my son. I'm going to do anything I can to help him. That's the way our Heavenly Father is. Even when you make the mistake, even when you bring the trouble on yourself, God is so merciful. He says, I'll still help you to get out. That's why it's called amazing grace. You don't deserve it. You didn't earn it. It's just the goodness of God.